ever made a decision and later thought, wait, why did I even agree to that? Maybe you went along with the group just to avoid conflict, even when deep down you didn't fully agree. If that sounds familiar, then you've been caught in the sneaky grip of groupthink. Now, groupthink isn't mind control. You still have your own thoughts, but it's all about the pressure to conform, the desire for harmony, and staying quiet when you really should speak up. Hi, I'm Stephen Walters. Welcome to the Mindful Communication Revolution. Today, we're going to talk about what groupthink is, how it subtly sneaks into your decisions, and how you can spot it before it takes over. Trust me, this is happening more often than you think, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to deal with it and stop it. So what is groupthink exactly? Let's break it down. Groupthink happens when people care more about keeping everyone on the same page than making the best decisions. The need for harmony takes over, and suddenly critical thinking and common sense they get tossed aside. And here's the tricky part. It's not like everyone suddenly shares the same mind, like in a sci-fi movie. It's more subtle than that. You still have your own thoughts, but you choose to keep quiet or go along with the group because it feels easier. That's why groupthink is so dangerous. It can sneak up on you without you even realizing it. Think of it like a flock of sheep. One starts to walk in a certain direction and soon the whole flock follows along. Even if some of the sheep hesitate, they all just keep moving because the rest of the group is. In groupthink, the group moves in one direction, even if some people don't fully agree, because no one wants to be the one who stands out. And speaking of following along, I don't want you to just go with the flow. If you're already finding value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. I'm all about encouraging you to think critically, challenge the norm, and have conversations that really matter. So, if you want to keep exploring topics like this, be sure to subscribe and stay connected, not just in an echo chamber. Now, let me give you a couple of real life examples where this happens all the time. First up, social media. Ever wonder why your feed always seems to match your opinions? That's not an accident. Social media platforms are designed to show you content that keeps you engaged, which usually means showing you things you already agree with. This is what's called an echo chamber. Here's how it works. You follow people and pages that share your views, so your feed becomes a constant stream of content that reinforces what you already believe. Over time, it feels like everyone agrees with you, but really, you're just seeing a narrow slice of reality. And because everyone around you seems to agree, you stop questioning things. Now, how can you spot groupthink in this situation? If you're never seeing any opposing views, that's a red flag. When people disagree, they either get ignored or shut down. Or maybe you've noticed yourself hesitating to post something because you don't want to deal with a backlash. That's groupthink at work. So here's a tip. Step outside your bubble. Seek out different perspectives, even if they challenge your own. You don't have to agree with everything, but it's important to know what's out there. Now let's talk about how groupthink shows up in politics. Sometimes a politician will use something called gaslighting to create groupthink. Gaslighting is when someone manipulates you into doubting your own reality, making you question what's true and what isn't. A politician might discredit their critics, saying things like, they don't know what they're talking about, or everyone else is lying, but I'm telling the truth. Over time, their followers start to believe that this politician is the only one with the right answers, even if they don't make sense. Dissenting opinions get pushed aside, and soon you've got groupthink in full swing. Now, how can you spot this? Watch for moments when only one narrative is being pushed and any other viewpoints are dismissed or mocked. If someone is shutting down all opposition and insisting that only their perspective is valid, that's a clear sign of groupthink. And just like on social media, the solution is to seek out multiple sources of information. Don't rely on just one voice. Challenge yourself to explore different viewpoints and see if the facts line up. Now that you've seen groupthink in action, how do you know when it's happening? First, look out for self-censorship. If you're holding back what you really think because you don't want to rock the boat, that's a big red flag. In groupthink, people stay quiet to avoid conflict even when they know something's off. Second, look for the illusion of harmony. This happens when silence is mistaken for agreement. Just because no one is speaking up doesn't mean everyone's on the same page. If everyone's going along without any real discussion, Groupthink is probably creeping in. Third, be aware of pressure to conform. Sometimes you feel like you have to agree with a group to avoid conflict, even if you don't fully believe in what's being said. This kind of pressure can come from subtle cues, 
like people rolling their eyes when someone disagrees. Or it can be more direct, like telling someone to, hey man, get on board. Finally, there's direct pressure on dissenters. If someone speaks up and immediately gets shut down or criticized, that's a major warning sign. In groupthink, the centers are often seen as troublemakers, when really, they're just trying to offer a different perspective. So how do we stop groupthink before it causes real damage? Here's a few things you can do. First, encourage open dialogue, whether it's at work, with your friends, or online. Make sure everyone feels safe to speak up. When people know their opinions will be heard, they're more likely to share them. Just like I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Next, seek out diverse perspectives. Don't just stick to one news source or surround yourself with people who think like you. Challenge yourself to listen to other viewpoints. You don't have to agree with them, but it's important to understand them. Another great way to prevent groupthink is to ask tough questions. Don't be afraid to challenge the status quo. Ask, is this really the best idea? Or have we thought about the alternatives? Playing devil's advocate isn't about being difficult. It's about making sure all options are on the table. Speaking of playing devil's advocate, in group decision making, invite someone to challenge the group's ideas. Give someone the role of questioning everything to prevent the group from falling into the trap of agreeing too quickly. Finally, embrace disagreement. It might sound counterintuitive, but healthy disagreement leads to better decisions. When people feel comfortable voicing their opinions, the group as a whole benefits. Don't shy away from tough conversations. They're the ones that lead to real progress. Hey, listen up and don't feel bad about this. Groupthink is subtle, but now that you know the signs, you can catch it before it takes control. Remember, just because everyone else is staying quiet doesn't mean you have to. Your voice matters. Speak up, ask questions, and don't let groupthink steer your decisions. Now, I want to hear from you. Have you ever felt pressured just to go along with a group even though you didn't agree? Drop that comment below and share your experience. Let's start a conversation about how we all can break free from the grip of groupthink before it's too late. And if you're curious about how groupthink compares to something more extreme, like gaslighting, check out this video next, where we dive into the silent alarms of gaslighting that something is wrong with what you're hearing or seeing. You don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you online soon.